Welcome back to The Founder. And today we're here once again at this beautiful space, the Colombo Cooperative. And today I have with me Shanila from Photo Design. And we're going to get to know a little bit more about her story. Shanila, how are you today? Good, and thank you for having me. Awesome. And how has your morning been so far? Good, thank you. Good? Okay, awesome. So tell me a little bit more about your company. Okay, so um, Photo Design is the name of my company and we specialize in uh, custom picture framing. So um, let me be brief and tell you my tagline, which is art becomes personal once defined by a frame. Wow, that's amazing. So be it a painting, a photograph, an object, whatever it is, if you like it, frame it. If you like it, frame it. That's pretty awesome. Shanila, tell us when your company started. Okay, so photo design started in 1986, uh, way before my time, but um, it was started by my dad and um, it was actually a hobby of his which he, I guess, didn't have much time to run. Um, started with only laminating. So when I took over, it was 2002. I didn't really intend to take over. My um, dad wanted me to close things up and um, before I um, pursued my line of study, which was completely different to what um, I'm doing right now. So um, I could say I um, started picture framing, the picture framing segment of photo design, which is its main product yes. now, in 2002. Okay, that's amazing that you carried on the legacy. Now, what would you say actually brought about the inspiration for this project? Okay, so to be honest, I wasn't, I don't, I didn't think of myself as a person who would own my business one day or have something of my own. I always felt I had the attributes to be led by somebody always and be guided. Um, so there was one story though that caught my eye and that was the story of Anita Roddick and how she transferred her interests and her passion into her business, uh, which is now known as the Body, body Shop. shop yes. um, so one little story that she says is about how she visited Sri Lanka and she was traveling and she saw these village ladies use pineapple on their face and that got her thinking to do these natural products and that was an inspiration for her to start the body shop. So that story excited me but then again I didn't really think about uh, uh, having my own place. But when um, my dad told me to close this business down and I was looking into uh, what I could do and suddenly out of nowhere the picture framing part came into my head. The fact um, that a picture frame can transform a painting or some whatever is valuable to the customer can transform it and give it new life. Um, that became my inspiration and a fun thing to do transferred into my passion so yeah what a beautiful so. inspirational uh, thing that you picked up from uh, a person like Anita Roddick right I believe one thing that a lot of people have a lot of difficulty in you know um, they have ideas everyone has ideas but uh, putting into practice is the challenge and what mm -hmm. would you say um, brings about ideas for you okay so um, a lot of people have ideas but looking in, what I feel is looking into the finer detail of implementing those ideas are probably not looked into because you get excited when you have a new idea, you know, and you just want to go and do it. Yeah, that's true. But um, factors such as um, the, the capital involved, the cost, uh, finding the right people to carry on your idea, um, knowing and studying your target audience, all of that needs to be accounted into in order to pursue that idea that was born. So um, 
I also believe in having your heart, your total heart in it because when tough times come, that is what will um, help you to carry on without giving up. Yeah. So when you think of an idea, I think you just need to look into the big picture. Yeah, and, and, and everybody can take an example out of that as well. So uh, tell me about, you know, one of the things that you had to do is like take over uh, mm -hmm. your parents' company, right, mm -hmm. in 2002, I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, there would have been challenges. So mm -hmm. what was the toughest challenge that you had to face? Okay, so when I took the company over, my dad wasn't really expecting me to take it forward because okay. we were just, we were just thinking of closing it down because that, it's not his main business, you know. But I got excited when I saw this picture, when I thought about this picture framing thing. So it was a company that already had its staff. So changing that mindset of the staff, they were quite rigid. Um, probably perceived me as a small brat, okay. maybe. <laughs> um, also, um, the company had a loan. Uh, so I was stepping into kind of a liability with this little dream of mine. Um, yeah, and this constant thing in my mind, am I doing the right thing? Uh, I've studied and I've come back to do, to get into the corporate world. Um, so that balance was there. Those would be the challenges. So challenges, yeah, we spoke about that. But now tell me about what marketing strategies that you had to come up, you know, face particularly. Okay, so my main marketing strategy is word of mouth. Um, this means I have to ensure that the product is of very good quality. Um, I must say I don't always get it right, uh, but at least it pushes me and uh, it makes me keep trying until I get the product right. Um, I always think if I, if the client were to invite me over for a meal or for um, tea or something to their house, if I sit there and I look at the wall and see that picture and I'm disappointed with it, mm. that's not going to make me happy. <laughs> so I always think of it like that. Um, and. Uh, See, you see, when you do something that you really like and you're passionate about, this is, it's not a pain to do something like this. It's actually very challenging and a lovely thing to do. So. Yeah. What would you say has been the hardest decision you've had to make so far? Mm, whether I should do this interview or not. <laughs> no, it's joking. Um, okay, so... Okay, so um, when photo design was quite new um, and I was trying to get my name out there, we got approached by a high profile client. Okay. Okay. I was so excited because I thought, okay, this is my chance to make it, you know, get out there and then he will go and tell everybody about me and then, you know, yeah. I'm quite sorted then. So um, they, they had a very short deadline. Uh, it was a big challenge. And um, we took it over, we did it. But however, when we handed over the finished products, I myself noticed a small mistake done on our part. Mm -hmm. But the client did notice it and neither did his team and they accepted it. Okay. But this was bothering me. <laughs> so uh, I, um, I, would, I was toying with the idea of should I tell him um, and lose this opportunity of making it, you know? Okay. Or should I just let it go unnoticed yeah. kind of thing. But then when I really thought about it, I, wanted, I always wanted the foundation of my business to be built on honesty. Yes. Yeah. So I um, went ahead and I told him what happened. Okay. Um, but he was so appreciative of it okay. that in the end he um, continued coming to me, brought much more orders and encouraged all his colleagues to come to me as well. So I got what I wanted out of the job okay. but 
through a hard decision. What a rewarding yeah. moment, I would say, for it, being honest at the same time. It really was a de defining moment for me in my <laughs> work experience. That's so, amazing. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that would have been frustrating, right? So obviously, frustration comes with any startup. Mm -hmm. What would you say has been your frustrating moment uh, having a startup like this? Hmm, frustration. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, looking back, I would say the most frustrating part for me was when I started okay. and um, because it's a new thing for me, I studied the product and you know, um, I've been reading into my competition, I know what they're doing and I feel like we're offering the same product for probably less cost and uh, more personalized and everything. But Always the clients would want to go to the more established uh, places because of, I guess, reliability. Mm. I can't blame them for yes. it, but you know, <laughs> that was a bit frustrating that we could offer the same product. Um, but uh, people would always go to the bigger uh, and the, long, the person who's been in the industry for longer. Mm. We were quite new at the mm -hmm. time. So those were, those were little those frustrations. Little frustrations. Yeah. Um, apart from that, there's always frustrations like um, handling staff, you know, um, uh, clients who don't, who, who can't really um, communicate what they want, so I have to kind of imagine, you know. But um, if I look at the big picture again, I couldn't do it without my staff. I have a great team and all from my clients, I learned so much. So. That's yeah. So obviously when it comes to uh, you know having your own startup, there are a few challenges that you have to face like for example financing. Was financing for you um, any easier? Um, being a small and medium enterprise, I would, um, I would say it's best to always avoid taking loans. Yeah. But if you are pushed to do that, I feel it's very important that you have a backup plan about how you're going to pay back mm -hmm. um, and be responsible about that, to okay. stick to that. Um, yeah. yeah, and were the banks helpful for you at all? Uh, banks are helpful <laughs> uh, if you cooperate with them and uh, work with them. Again, I would say you have to have that payback plan yeah. and uh, stick to it. I think that would be. So tell me, Shanila, what has uh, been something that you failed before you succeeded? Have you ever had a moment where you failed? Obviously. <laughs> Um, when it comes to failure, I actually think now because I've been running this business for almost well, for 17 years, um, failure is something you have to go through in order to keep running a successful business. Um, it helps you to um, learn how to handle crisis, to handle a cross section of clients to handle staff problems, um, so uh, there have been many instances where I have failed and I've thought should I just stop and give up, but now looking back in retrospect, I think that's what has made me and um, just to give a small example, when I was during my pregnancies, like um, it would be so difficult. Uh, because sometimes clients, or you can't expect clients to think that you're reliable when you have so much going on in your personal life. Sure. Yeah. But um, all of those have just added to yeah, my experience. So, yeah. Yeah. so what really gets you up in the morning? <laughs> what gets me up in the morning is the morning school run. <laughs> <laughs> no, but on a serious note, um, I know I might sound like a cliche, <laughs> uh, philosophical person, but uh, no I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I believe in. Um, I believe that everyone has a purpose in life, um, and I'm very grateful that 
there is life. Mm -hmm. So I always think that every day is a new day to um, a new opportunity to um, be of some kind of influence to the people that surround you. On a daily basis, you meet your, I meet my staff, I meet uh, even my family, my children, my um, uh, husband, my friends. Um, when I drop my kids, I meet parents. And I think it's an opportunity to share something that we've been blessed with or yeah. something good with someone else. All right. So, yeah. um, so stepping away from the seriousness, I have a fun question for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's the craziest thing you've done at office? I don't think I can reveal all the crazy <laughs> things I've done in office. That's what they all say. <laughs> <laughs> but my friends know this story and they love it, so okay. I share it. Um, there was once a client who came in and I just assumed he couldn't hear and that he couldn't speak. Okay. So I spoke to him in sign language, the best, not that I know sign language, but in the best okay. possible way that okay. I could. And he thought that I couldn't hear and I couldn't speak. So oh. he started talking to me in sign language as well. <laughs> so we both had this five minute conversation in sign language until he resorted to saying, Oh, is it? And then I got such a shock and I ran out of my office. I was very embarrassed when my staff questioned me about it. That but, is actually yeah. crazy. It's, <laughs> it's more awkward than crazy, uh -huh. I would say, but fun story. What would you say is your definition of success? Um, I believe it's peace of mind. Peace of mind. Okay. That's it, short and simple, peace mm -hmm. of mind is, is very Just important. That. Actually, a lot of people forget mental health is also important, very important. Uh, another thing is uh, for the fact that you have your own company. Now, if you were to take over a company or a brand, uh, other than what you're doing, what would it be? Okay, it would definitely be Barefoot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's my favorite brand in the whole wide world. Can I ask why? <laughs> I just love, I love the concept, mm -hmm. I love that they use local crafts people, I love the colour, but I wouldn't really want to take it over because I don't do, I don't think I'll do such a good job <laughs> with it, so yeah. And so now considering that uh, you don't have this startup that you are building right now, what would you be doing if not? Okay, so many times I have wanted to give up. Okay. <laughs> because I find the balance a little hard mm -hmm. and uh, since I have three little kids now mm -hmm. I would say the next best option is full-time mom. Oh, yeah. that's such an awesome answer and uh, yeah, congratulations on your kids. <laughs> so Shanila, now that you are the boss, would you ever work for someone else? <laughs> mm. If that person was aligned with my same personality and work ethic, okay. I think I could do it. Okay, yeah. sure. And another thing is the fact that there are so many founders everywhere now. If you had the opportunity to have dinner with one of these world famous founders, who would world it be? Famous. It doesn't even have to be world famous. It has to be something small or anyone that you admire to have dinner with. Hmm. Okay, so there's this company called Siberian and okay. one of the founders is very cute <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like to have dinner with him okay um, but uh, why I would like to have dinner with him is I love his work, work ethic and uh, the way he uh, balances everything and he does his work and comes home by 536 so that okay. he can spend time with his kids and drop kids to school in the morning uh, and I really look up to that so awesome. yeah. check him out Siberian. <laughs> you yourself being a startup well, what would you give um, others like what kind of an advice would you give others who are also trying to get their own business up and running? Um, actually I'm still learning on the yeah. job as well but from the little bit of knowledge what or my have, experience yeah. that I have, I would say um, you should really know your product what, or your idea. You should really study it to detail. 
you should try and understand what your competition is doing right. Um, one big thing I have learned is you should be ready to accept faults yes. in a good way so that you can turn it into a positive and get to know your field better. Um, expand slowly and strategically without trying to go full on into it. Um, but more than anything, I, I guess you just should not stop learning because that's something you can learn every day from the person who cleans your office to your most high profile client. You can learn a lot. Mm -hmm. So you should never close, your up, close yourself up yeah. to thinking that, okay, you've reached the plateau and there's nothing more that you can learn. That's true. Yeah. Um, I also think rest is a very important yeah. thing. <laughs> And to close with a little funny story, I came, you know, sometimes we as we get so caught up with our lives and we think we're always busy and we have no time and all of that. Uh, one day I came home after work and I just put my bags down. My husband and my kids were in the room and I was like, oh, I can't do this, I'm so tired, I'm so stressed, my whole body is hurting. And I was on this rant and then my small son just got up and said, Amma, Ochara Mahan Sinang, Nala Nidhiya Ganna. And that made so much sense, something so simple uh, to translate. Uh, he just said, have a, have a shower and go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that rest is also very important. Yeah. And that's what I'd like to leave with you. Some very wise words indeed. So thank you so much for talking to us. It was a pleasure having you here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so definitely check out Shanila from Photo Design. And where are you guys based? Um, address is 113A Park Road, Colombo 5.